to binary jazz where every day is chris's birthday but especially <laughs> yesterday because it really was his birthday yesterday um it's not allison's birthday yesterday but on recording days it's always allison's birthday so happy birthday allison thank you um <clears throat> so this is a show about uh birthdays stuff birthdays we're gonna party like it's our birthday um the Topics are made up, and we don't keep points, so it's not like whose line is it anyway. Also, we only have one. Are, Allison, do you do improv? I do now. <laughs> so, Allison and Chris do improv. I do not. Um, otherwise, it's exactly the same as whose line is it anyway. And who are we? Uh, we're binary jazz. Did I not say that? <laughs> Joined by Chris, Allison. I'm Gary. We're happy to have you. God, I killed another one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just in a constant existential crisis of who are we, what are we, and where are we going? That's totally accurate. Will there be web developers on Mars? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> um, it's been a week since we've done this, right? Mm-hmm. Are we rusty? I, well, I guess we'll find out. No Which more than how it works. So Alice brings a topic. Chris and I generally don't know anything about it. But sometimes we do. But, and when we do, uh, we, we embarrass ourselves at how little we actually think we know about it in the end. Um, yeah. Except for aglets. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, you can check out our website, binaryjazz.us. Um, and we have uh, some bots and some Slack integrations and sorts of other fun internet toys that you can play with. Oh my gosh, we're like fidget spinners for the internet. <laughs> New tagline. <clears throat> my job is done here. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry signs off for the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I am doing a different tactic this week. Since mm. it was Chris's birthday, you mm. get to choose pros or cons without knowing the topic first. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not a heavy hitting topic. This is, it's not too stressful in that regard. It's not, I'm not bringing politics to the table. I don't Cons. Think. Okay. Okay, Gary, that means you're pros. Okay. So, <laughs> the pros and cons of making alcohol out of corn. Go. <laughs> well, the pros are pretty obvious living in the country we live in. There's a shitload of corn. So, <laughs> so you're, leading, you're leading with we've got a lot of corn. <laughs> got to do something with it. Yep. How about, somewhere. how about feeding the starving children of Africa with the corn that we have instead of instead of uh, unnecessarily harvesting and uh, <laughs> producing alcohol. Literally, the, the starving children in Africa are why I need alcohol. Uh, so no, can... the starving children in alcohol are why you need cannabis. <laughs> Give them the corn, they can't eat weed. I'm pretty sure weed can be edible. Chris. Well, I mean, you can eat it, but it, I mean, <laughs> But it can't sustain you. The corn is better. Yeah. For that purpose. What are, what are the only, I can't think of anything. With, like, what, are, what is corn? What is corn alcohol? The, suddenly the pro switches. I know. Well, I like, uh -oh. what is corn even used for? <laughs> Why even corn? <laughs> Why even <have> um, corn? 
so, all of a sudden it's pro con just corn not, not <laughs> i'm kind of in on the path um is i don't i don't know much about like corn production is it is it is it pretty efficient i don't know if you're supposed to admit that you don't know anything about corn production i think you know everything about corn, it's production. corn dude <laughs> i mean corn <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if corn production is efficient. I know that we have a, a ton of it, but but do I we, do. Sorry, and where are you getting this? We have a ton of it. Just out of curiosity. Not that you're wrong. I just I don't. Because literally every food in the U.S. is made with corn syrup. Okay. Well, I mean, okay. like we have to have corn fiber farmers so we can milk the corn to make the syrup. Yes, with the uh, you know corn right. milking corn udders. devices. Right. Yeah. Corn udders. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I have in-laws up in uh, rural North Carolina outside of Charlotte, and um, when visiting one time, they were, the area they, li they lived, like there's fields around, and so everyone that, if you have a field and you're not a farmer, you sublet your field so people can grow stuff there, and one of the times we were there, it was corn in this field, so we grabbed a few pieces off the stalk, is that what corn grows on? The vine? It's not a vine. Not a tree. Right off, the, right off the corn. Not a tree. <laughs> Keep going. It's not a stalk. No, it's a corn. It's a yeah. It's a, I think it's a stalk. Corn pipe. We get right off the corn pipe. Yep. It's right? definitely a pipe. <laughs> right there off you the go. You finally nailed um, it. Yeah, and uh, and took it. Uh, it was actually, I believe it was around Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know if it's true or not. American Thanksgiving. Uh. And then we took it and we shucked it and tried to make corn out of it. But I, I don't know. Someone said, oh, this wait, is feed wait, corn. Wait, 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 wait. Stop the story. Yeah. Stop the story. Stop, stop. <laughs> you tried to make corn out of <laughs> corn. That was a, a clear misspeak. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We tried to make corn. For the listeners at home, you tried to make corn <laughs> out of corn. How can you uh, fail? Spoiler. How can you Spoiler. fail to make corn succeeded. out of corn? Um, we tried to prepare corn to eat off of this random corn we found. I don't well, know. Was, what it, was, was it actually? How do you fail to prepare corn? <laughs> you put it in boiling water and you leave it there for like ten minutes, and that's it. Do you remember? You the leave pan? it there for longer than ten minutes. It's just a little bit soggy, but it's still corn. Do you remember the parents from um, in the movie War Games? when um, the father sits down and he, he takes the corn, he slides it in butter, takes a bite, he's like, oh my God, it's still raw. And his wife's like, isn't it nice and crunchy? And he's like, it's raw. <laughs> anyway, yeah. She said it was better for you, you got more nutrients or something. Uh, so. It's probably that, true. I don't know. Um, I mean, I thought it was fine. I thought it was no different than any other corn I'd have. On or off cob. I, but people were like, oh, no, this is animal feed corn. Okay. I don't know if corn had different levels. Oh, yeah, when it's just for feed, and then... It was, and then, it was still on the vine, for God's sakes. How do we know it's for the vine? Yes. I do. I love the idea of, of corn on the vine. I do, too. Wouldn't that be great? You'd like, pull, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain it's a stalk. <laughs> I thought it was a pipe. <laughs> It's a corn pipe. Um, <laughs> one might say a corn cob pipe. I, well, not while well, there's still corn on there. This, the, you can't access the cob while it's protected by the outer barrier of corn nodules. The outer reach of corn, corn, corn. Um, so the topic is corn alcohol, pro or con? Well, I think it's just the pros and cons of corn in general at this point. We're just... yeah. This well, I was trying to problem. establish my understanding of corn. Well, I'm I'm definitely pro corn. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm definitely pro corn. I'm con corn alcohol. Also, porn alcohol, <laughs> 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 which is apparently what came out of my mouth first. What is going on today? <laughs> it's Friday. 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 Um. What? These are important stances for the people to know <laughs> that we hold. <laughs> for at least the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Four years. 
four more years. <laughs> did you see, I, I'm sorry, we're going to bring, I, I don't want to bring politics into this again, but did you see the video of uh, some Trump rally uh, before the election and people were chanting four more years? Oh. <laughs> I don't know that there are any words, but yeah. You said four more years. That just reminded me of the four more years chant at a, at a midterm rally. Yeah. 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 A midterm where the candidate was not. Where the president was not being. And, and, and also. Yeah. And, and, also senators, and senators don't run for four years and uh, neither do House representatives. So four more years is just the wrong number all the way around. Yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> don't care for it. I don't, yeah, I don't care yeah. for it. Don't. Yeah, con, con out of four more years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even anti. I'll take even that hard. hard, hard yeah. Hard corn, corn alcohol. I don't know what alcohol, alcohol is. It is corn. ambiguous on four more years, but I have firmly been in the anti con. I think, I think we can all take that stand. <laughs> I don't know what alcohol is made out of corn. Do, is, does does the topic uh, producer? That's the problem. I think I don't know, know what drinks what alcohol is. The topic producer is not well versed in corn based facts. Is that like is corn alcohol like ethanol like we would use in vehicles? Probably. Well, you can also yeah. Like, if, it's, like, if it's a biofuel, then hell yes. You can. Wait, aren't you? Oh no, you are pros. I forgot who was who. I will. I will have you know. <laughs> I've that. always been pro corn alcohol. I've never wavered in my support, <laughs> even when I didn't know what it was. <laughs> there are so many other forms of alcohol. We don't need another one. Keep that cool. Was, you know, when you first said it, I was thinking like rice, and I was thinking um, sake. Rice alcohol. Well, I was thinking sake, but then I was also thinking Budweiser beer has a lot of rice in it. So um, I don't know why. I, in fact, that's all it has. It's just basically just rice. Period. It is a it is a significant amount. There, I mean, there's that to be beer. It has to have other stuff. But yeah. No. Wow, a cloud. I'm, I'm con Budweiser beer. Huh? I'm, I'm con Budweiser beer. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Um, it has to be, um, you know, made by people, not by machines. I'll take everything else by robots, but not by beer. That's interesting. That's it is. I don't know why that is. I guess that's not true. Like, I don't want food by robots. I'm accepting of most robots. I don't know. The more I interact with people, the less enamored I am with them. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a weird conundrum. Yeah. I generally yeah. pro people, just not the ones that I've met. Yeah. We have a, a cidery uh, in town and and we've been inside a couple of times. They've got these huge, you know, uh, barrels and things, uh, and these huge distillers, distillers. I guess they're distillers. I don't know where where they make the cider. And it's it's made by people. I mean, there's there's a machine process, but there are people involved in in making the cider. Like you have to stamp and, on the apples, juice out, mashing. Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah, uh, I, I will know because I need to get myself a cider press so I could be making my own cider. But you I should. haven't gotten the cider That's press yet. Awesome. Yeah. Also, we had a really good crop of grapes this year, and the grapes are super sweet. And so, like, I'm thinking, like, grape cider beer. I'm thinking, like, think grape homemade wine. wine. I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. Well, that was my clarification was you said we, and did you mean, like, we as in you, or do you mean like we as in the family? But yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like just generally, the, the like, royal, oh, the royal we. Yeah, we had good grapes this year, or like <laughs> it was a good crop, and like you're just kind of encompassing yourself in there. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. What's what's the deal when you pump gas in your car and it's E85? What's five percent off, and what's the fifty percent off? Corn. I think it is. Which is That's bad. Why so definitely no corn alcohol. <laughs> it's more it's, flammable. It's less of, but well, it's less efficient in your engine. That's there, important. exactly. Thank you. It's less efficient in your engine. So well, you're you no longer reliant. You on shouldn't things do like it. Swimming. And um, more efficient fuel sources is better. Pulling in boats full of explosive 
chemicals and supporting weird regimes that dig dinosaurs out of the ground. I'm I'm con all Born forms alcohol. of fuel. Our, all our cars. I'm con all forms of fuel. We should all just drive electric cars. And when we drive electric cars, our power plants should burn corn alcohol. No, our power plant power plants will all be nuclear. Hydroelectric. Or that. Yeah. But not corn. Okay. But not corn. I not corn alcohol. Could, I wonder. I wonder if you could create. I mean, I think a power plant is like you just whatever you you just spin a turbine, not a turbine, a turbine. Um, <laughs> whatever you can. <laughs> that's enough to to generate electricity, right? The, so the, the rare you could burn corn cobs. power plant. <laughs> you could burn idea. corn cobs and stalks and husks, and then it would just smell like French fries all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because frying corn smells like French fries. Well, corn oil. Corn oil would, mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah. Or maybe I just hoped. <laughs> also, <laughs> we have some terrible like all the time. chips that Rhonda got at um, Trader Joe's that are like sweet corn. They're not corn chips. They're sweet. No, it's sweet corn popcorn is the flavor. Oh. Is that the flavor of good. the chips? No, of the popcorn. Sweet oh. corn popcorn. It's popcorn. I don't know why I thought it was chips. So sweet corn flavored popcorn. <laughs> popcorn. Yeah. Trader Joe's, yeah. you've outdone yourself. You don't need to. They have. You don't need to like corn flavor your corn. Oh, I will take your popcorn in its normal flavor. <laughs> yeah, like the. Popcorn. <laughs> yeah, popcorn flavor is, is fine. Um, yeah, she's like, this looked interesting. That's the word I would use. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> Uh, it's like, and it's fine. Like the first bite, you're like, oh yeah, this is kind of nice. And the Trader second, like, Joe's. Oh, it's enough. fine. <laughs> it's fine. So what's so are you big Trader Joe's shoppers? Either one of you? I yeah. I am when I'm in the States because I they don't have them here. Oh, that's right. People smuggle Trader Joe's across the border, don't they? Yeah. yeah. There's Trader, what's his name? The guy out in the Vancouver, right? It's not it's not Trader, it's Mountie. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um no, it, you know what? You know what I'm talking about? There's a guy that smuggles like van fulls of food he buys from Trader Joe's. Yeah, he like oh, yeah. forces it for people. I think he got shut down though. Um, unfortunately. I, I don't understand that he shut him down. He's buying it at retail. Well, I think right? you can only cross the border with so many, so many goods before people start questioning what you're doing. I think, and he's also like making, obviously, he was making money because he's smart. Um, like, I, I still don't find that objectionable either. Oh, well, like, I don't. I don't either. This is arbitrage. This is like the it's, basis on which all business is built. Like there is probably a, some sort of area. There's probably some sort of consumer law where he needs to like, because it's across international borders. So he probably needs to like pay some tax for importing uh, sure. Uh, sure. retail products. And, and if he's not but, doing but it's it. Canada, then, it's NAFTA. I mean, I say that confidently. I mean, we still have rules. <laughs> um, and, and I also, guess one of the other ones was it's not labeled correctly, right? It's going to only be English labeling. Well, that's true. So bilingual, labeling, like, uh, bilingual labeling, which, you know, I mean, that's risky business for sure. And you can't, yeah, I'm sure there's some sort of, you can't resell without the bilingual labeling. Also, he wasn't like just bringing in like a crate of jam or something. He was bringing in like trucks and trucks of things and like basically stocking a, a Trader Joe's on the other side of... <laughs> I really feel like he just kind of, uh, I really feel like the way this played out is he just sort of, like it started out like he brought in a few things for friends and was like, this is fun. And he just thought he'd try and take it how far he could go with it. I, I imagine he wasn't making much money. It was more like the thrill of the just absurdness of the situation. Well, I, would be I can see myself getting involved in something like this. Making like, money. Yeah. <laughs> making money. But also Did like there was a bank. I thought he owned like a, another shop. I thought he owned a grocery store and that, this was like the supplement. I don't know. Oh, maybe. I don't know. But he also like let media do like focus pieces on him. So he couldn't have been that concerned, at least in the beginning, because people were doing like articles and like major yeah. publications. So Yeah. To answer your really question though, I am not a huge Trader Joe's person. I've gone in a couple times, but but and they have had interesting things, but it's not a thing that, that hits the, the normal rounds of shopping trips. I think if I lived in a place where there was Trader Joe's all the time, I probably wouldn't 
be as fond of it as I am because I don't have it. Also, I really love their packaging because they basically like buy other people's products and repackage it under the Trader Joe's like umbrella, right? But their packaging is so just like beautiful. It's like it's nice. Yeah. 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 Like they're sure. cho like chocolate bars. I'm like this, I don't buy chocolate bars, but I want to buy a chocolate bar because they've made it so aesthetically pleasing. I just like the packaging or like the tin. Just, yep. they've ensnared me. So my dad spent forever in, in retail, retail grocery, oh. uh, retail foods. And uh, he worked for a small uh, grocery chain in the Bay Area for a number of years called Petrini's. There's a one of the last family owned uh, business uh, grocery chains. Um, they no longer exist anymore. Uh, and Trader Joe, towards the end of their time, Trader Joe bought the company, like Joe, mm -hmm. the actual Joe <laughs> bought Petrini's. Um, so my dad met and hung out with Joe a number of times um, and would bring home like random crap that Joe find because literally like, <laughs> the store is called Trader Joe's. That's literally what he does. He just goes and finds random shit. And like, this looks cool. And then he brings it into a store. And that's, that's what Trader Joe's is. And he sort of tried to do that with the trainees and it totally failed. Like, really hard. Um, because people didn't want a Trader Joe's. They wanted a grocery store. They wanted a family. That's what the brand was. Um, and then it became another chain called Molly Stone's. Sweet corn popcorn was not gonna yeah. cut it. No, it wasn't. It wasn't so much. Um, but it was. It was. It does not live by sweet corn popcorn alone. <laughs> it was interesting uh, for a couple years, just like you know, for for like holiday parties and stuff. My dad would come home with like random shit that was just like that. Yeah, yeah, you would find Cajun it at the trader. Yeah. What? Why? But I, I always found the story. I always found the idea of of a guy who's like motivation is to find like interesting and strange things that you wouldn't normally find in the grocery store and putting them in the grocery store. And like, that is, that's his job. That's what he does. I always thought that that idea was really, was really fun and kind of fascinating and that he built a business out of it and that people actually go there and buy things. I, I believe that this, it, in the, that was probably where it was. I believe this day and age, it's a boardroom. People are pitching ideas like, oh, it's, it's the fall. We need to pump and spice everything. You know? <laughs> Pumpkin spice deodorant, pumpkin spice pumpkins, pumpkin spice lemons. Yes, pumpkin I mean, to go food. along with your, yeah, your just... corn flavored corn popcorn, then pumpkin spice pumpkins is definitely a thing. <laughs> oh, I need to move pumpkin off the porch. Don't let me forget to do that. Uh, we've, we've had them too long and they're starting to melt a little on the porch. Yeah. Because it's been 85 Florida. degrees the last week. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our, we carve pumpkins on the 30th. Um, and on the first, I had to get rid of them. Like they were, had already drooped and started molding. Isn't that crazy? Two days. Gosh. Two days. 48 hours. And they were salad when I cut into them. Meanwhile, it's raining ice outside here, so. I've heard that. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other I'm thing. I'm getting even further south this afternoon Trader before Trader Joe's. Joe's. Trader Joe's sells pumpkins. Not, I was gonna say year round. They sell them far too long seasonally, I feel. At least I remember. Also their customer service, that actually is a bizarre thing because when I come back, I realize how urban and jaded and bitter I am because they'll ask me like, what are you up to this weekend or something? And I immediately am suspicious. <laughs> when in reality, uh -huh. I'm like buying I'm buying like an assortment of things and they think I'm having like a fun get together or something and they just like want to chat about it. And I'm like, why do you want to know? Like, are you following me to my car in the parking lot? Like I'm immediately suspicious when I, mean, I don't need to be. Huh. They're just trained to ask you like, how's your day going? When I was um, doing the uh, small kitchen appliances gig, um, we had, um, some folks from the factory in China come over and they were demoing, what were they demoing? I think a dehydrator or maybe, I don't know, a dehydrator or like a food processor or something. Um, so they were like, we need you to help us get to a grocery store and get some produce for tomorrow for the stranger. We were in Chicago, it was like windy and 
like teeny tens of degrees. Um, so, and I was wearing like a hoodie because I don't know any better. Freezing, they're freezing. <laughs> all, your, all, all, all your stories where you involve travel, you're very ill prepared for the, whatever the weather is. I'm just, I, like place. Florida, it'll be cold in the morning and then I can be back down. No, no I And just, then it'll be cold I, in the evening. It won't be cold in the morning or the evening because Florida, Florida, <laughs> you do not understand the concept of cold. I have seen snow on this very porch once. For five minutes. <laughs> was it cotton-based? Oh. <laughs> no, no, it was Florida. Was they it were corn corn-based? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was Florida. It was on uh, like the 23rd or 24th of December. I was going to a football game with my dad and trying to figure out like what to wear. I'm on the back porch and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, well, you don't expect it in Florida. <laughs> Yes, but what is that white stuff falling from the sky? <laughs> Probably if you lived, well, anywhere, really, even in Florida, you should have a pretty self-explanatory answer. White stuff falling from the sky, hmm, it's not cocaine. It great, but you know, you know, like, when, it could be in Florida. It, you know, like, when it falls and it like, doesn't really fall straight down and it's just, you know, like, it's doing that kind of thing. That's, uh, that's what snow does. Yeah, like, the clouds, the clouds me, are not dealing with that mess all the time um the clouds are yeah, so that was one time and another time it was it was heavy enough that um it was actually falling straight down and i went inside where i was working i mean everyone came outside like look it's snowing and we all stood out there and marveled at how effing cold it was and that there was snow falling um and those are like the two big times i remember in the decade in jacksonville so anyway you're in chicago and you're ill prepared again yeah. And you had to buy corn. <laughs> we went to Trader Joe's. Um, to that get was a produce. bad. That was a bad move. If you're trying to get produce for a demo and you will go to Trader Joe's, that's not gonna. <laughs> Why not? It worked fine. Hmm. It was fine. I think we got. I think we got. She she, she got a watermelon, um, which I thought was. I, I don't know. Like, what are you going to do with that thing? Okay, whatever. Well, that's, yeah, I w wasn't going to say that's not your go-to choice, probably. If you're selling, like, samurai swords or something. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> uh, like, and then, sure. like, a lot of, like, the stuff, you, like, we got a pineapple and apples and other stuff. Uh, but it was funny watching the interaction at the checkout, um, like, trying to pay, and, like, the trader just people trying to be polite, and the person buying the produce not speaking a word of English. And me just hanging out like trying to help the situation without you know really like controlling it and it was a fun show and then know. we went to some hot dog place across the street and it happened. I feel like you had the true Chicago experience it was windy <laughs> went to a Trader Joe's and then you had a hot dog <laughs> I had the yeah. true Trader Joe's or I had the true not Trader Joe's I had the true Chicago experience I was in the airport I was stranded the weather is awful I had takeout in a hotel I've I too have had the awesome. Chicago experience <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. so Chicago is a great place to build um Elon's like tunnel shuttle thing what's it called the, oh, the transit the, thing? Uh, the, Hyperloop. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was we, stuck we, my, in my head, I was stuck on, on the boring company. Oh. Yeah, and the idea is, yes. Yes. <laughs> because it's that. boring. Yes. But also kind of boring. <laughs> um, such a dumb I read an article not too long ago about traffic. Um, <laughs> that's a hell of a setup. Boy, this sounds exciting. Yeah, I cannot wait to hear where this goes. <laughs> I read an article a while ago about traffic. That's and, what uh, I'm like, I'm going to need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, and the premise of the article was that um, we, we never solve traffic problems by adding lanes. We just add more traffic. Yeah. That'll like, handle more capacity. And I sort of thought, like, well, okay, it's a very pessimistic view. No. I about more, and I'm like, well, it's factual. It, but it can't always be the case. Like, it can't, like, if the net outcome is like, well, traffic still sucks. Like, what? <laughs> then, then don't spend the fucking money and build an extra lane. But they think it like, won't suck. 
<laughs> but they for don't. like five they minutes, don't think that for five because... minutes it, it doesn't suck, and then more cars use that freeway because it's bigger, and then it sucks again. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because like the whole like impact mitigation studies, we have to make sure we're not displacing like some herd of beavers or on Indian land or over sinkholes or we're going to, you know, displace the pythons in the swamp. I mean, like to build is is a pretty big deal. And like no one stops to think like, oh, do, do, do we really need to do this? No, it's all about politics. Not build. No. And the beavers would be fine. And... No, it's all about it's all about we're going to solve this problem by doing this stupid thing. Nobody stops to ask any questions. They get elected, they do the stupid thing because they said they were going to just do the stupid thing. And they never stop. Not once do they stop and say, "Hey, is this a good idea? Do we have other alternatives?" This is the whole problem with like everything. I have a car um, that, like, since July, I've had a slow leak in the tire, but I don't drive it very often because I don't go anywhere very often that I need. I mean, if I go somewhere with the family, we go in the minivan. So this other car, it just kind of sits there. So I've just been planning for the long, like every time I leave, I'm like, well, I need an extra five minutes so I can stop and put air in the tire before I go somewhere. It's slowly leaking it, you know. And then last week it was like, well, the stars aligned. I can go get this tire fixed, finally get it plugged. And um, that scheduling, you know, just wasn't that disruptive, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and then on Sunday before I was going to do this, I bought a can of like slime or something to stick in the tire, you know, and it hasn't leaked since then. So I totally was like, well, I'm not going to patch it to hell with it. I should just sell that car. That's, that's what I should do. <laughs> yes. Get rid of it. It'll it be someone else's problem. not like you need it at all. <laughs> there are times, like last night we needed, um, we needed school book fair and Rhonda had a Cub Scout something meeting. Cub Scout something meeting. Leadership? I don't know. Cub Scout then something leaving um so we needed two cars because i needed to bring the kids home from the book fair and she needed to go to the cup scout thing oh is it like one of those scholastic book fairs no it was at a barnes and noble Um, (laughs) see my eyes light up i was like sounds exciting (laughs) yeah it was at a barnes and noble um 45 minutes from my house is that the nearest barnes and noble to your house i guess bookstores are going what is going on? I guess Florida. I can't hear you all anymore. Huh. I had nothing well, to offer anyway. That's cool. <laughs> well, uh, we're on to questions, and I guess Gary can't ask them or answer them or ask them or do much. Oh, we're back. Hello. <laughs> Did I miss anything important? No. Yes, we're but... talking about you behind your back. Good choice. And now my computer's playing. Christina Aguilera song. What the hell is going on? I love your Friday. I don't know what's happening over there, but you're rocking it out. Uh, Allison, should we go to the backlog of questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, Top of my list. uh, Well, I guess I should go to the bottom of the list. The bottom of the list, because it's the oldest, uh, is if you were in a witness protection program, what would be your new name and location? Time out. Catch me up. This is question time. Yes. But but you're asking the question and Allison is well, answering the question? No, it's it's Allison's question. I was That's asking my her. question, but oh. you're, you're going into the backlog. Don't yeah. worry. I'm sorry. I, Christina. <laughs> Take your Why time. Why do I even have Christina Aguilar on this computer? How do I have music on this computer? You don't have to lie to us, Gary. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The question was. Question was. If you're in a witness protection program, what would be your new name and location? So, Shingles McGee. Not Florida. <laughs> Shingles McGee. And it would be in like South Florida. I think everyone in South Florida is a like, potential witness relocation person. Right? Why, what, why would you have been relocated? What would your folly have been? about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, probably voter fraud. So Chuck Tell Schumer, my, my, my new name would be Chuck Schumer, so I could constantly oh. go around and say, not that Chuck Schumer. <laughs> and I would be living in, in Detroit, Michigan. Okay. And what would you, why would you have been relocated? Uh, or I guess you can't talk about it, who knows? Yeah. You have some R- sort of- writing out, writing out a bookie, probably. <laughs> Writing out shingles for voter fraud. <laughs> it's a signature didn't match. 
<laughs> I, my ballot jammed in the machine Tuesday. Well, that's stressful. Yeah. Well, I saw. I'm just, I'm just sharing that just to put in perspective. What, like, so I've, I've been asked uh, four times by text, like, why can Florida not handle counting votes? Uh, and I share that that I can't vote by mail, and now apparently I can't vote by machine either because that that didn't work. For me. So I'm just putting it out there that it's a lot harder than it appears in Florida. Like, it's not easy to do. I don't know how the rest I, of you do it, but. Well, I saw I saw a video of the of the governor of Georgia trying to cast his boat vote not boat but his, not his not casting his boat but <laughs> cast his vote. It went into the voting center and his voting ID was invalid. So the governor of Georgia could not vote for the governor well, of Georgia. Are you sure if he's qualified to vote for governor? <laughs> I don't think he is. Wasn't he the, isn't that the state where? He, yes. Yeah, okay. He was, he was, yeah. Isn't that the state? I was really thanking Georgia for the cover this round, right? <laughs> Great. Thank you guys for making us look not, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what are the, what are the federal, um, what's the federal language that, that is out there for like what voter, voter, uh, like what do you, is, is there federal language in place that says like what was required to be eligible to vote? Or is it, I mean, I know it's, oh, oh, states have individual, but is there like a federal minimum? As in who is eligible to vote? Or as in yeah. like what materials you should provide? Well, as defining what, what counts as eligible, yeah. So I guess that both, is there, I don't know if there's a federal, there must be, right? Some kind of federal thing that says like, you have to be a human and alive and a resident of the district you're voting in. Probably. You have to make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. Breathe on this mirror. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a reflection? Uh, I, I can, That's why you have a mirror. It's two birds, one stone. Alive, not a vampire. Great. I can fabricate an answer, but I do not have a real answer. That's fair. I just, I didn't know, and I have never Googled it, and I certainly won't today, because it's Florida. I'll open it up, and the points don't matter. That should be the topic next week. Just Florida. Florida. <laughs> Pros and cons. I think Florida is a, a sort of like an underlying topic of every episode. Pros and cons. <laughs> I can take both sides, and I still don't want to take it off topic. <laughs> <laughs> There's no real winner, I think, with those. Nor with corn alcohol. Did you see? There's no winner. I don't know if the story went national or not, but there was a guy down the road in St. Augustine that climbed into the. Um, Alligator Farm is a pretty famous um, alligator zoo with crocodile. Yes, uh, I saw this. It did go national. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> good. He thought it was his buddy's house and jumped into what he thought was the pool. And then when he was like dragging himself through someone's backyard, they were like, what happened? It's like, I was from my buddy's pool. It was full of alligators. Not sure what you're on, man. But he left <laughs> many, his pants and crocs. It, it's Florida, so probably several things. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just one thing. Yeah. It's that damn snow. <laughs> <laughs> I made a joke about Florida, Florida and meth in like with another dev at work and um, it was like crickets. I don't think they, I don't know like why it was, didn't add to insult my home state. I think it was like, not the home state, I think it was the meth part. <laughs> well, they were like, I didn't realize you're from Florida. I'm like, yeah, it's because I don't use, I don't, I'm not on meth right now, right? <laughs> and it was just like crickets. Yeah. Forever. I mean, that, that was a joke. Like, I think the or just, ever was probably not implied. I guess I, I, that's that concerns me. <laughs> I don't even have meth mouth. You know, I don't even know what meth mouth is. You tend to lose a lot of teeth. teeth oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then they get a job at Seven Eleven. Oh. I was on trend. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.